All right, so we were doing a little bit of searching on both Google and Bing, uh, and we're starting to think about this concept of the long tail keyword. And that's, that's how hopefully we will be getting found more, because a lot of, unfortunately, what SEO is, you have to apply a lot of hedge words. Possibly, maybe, probably. You can't really account for all aspects of this, uh, this field because there could always be a change to the algorithm, there could be new techniques and such. Whatever you're doing now perhaps doesn't work anymore in 12 months. Maybe it's been changed. So this stuff always changes. And therefore, after you learn these concepts and decide, well, I think I have a good grasp of it, but I'd rather hire someone to do it. I've got to run my business. Hopefully whoever you hire is applying the latest techniques, is not trying to do the old basic keyword method, and many of the other techniques we'll talk about. So part of modern SEO also, all right here, three pillars of modern SEO. We've got longevity. Yes. Could you say natural language search? Um, what you say when you speak to the phone is the same thing you can say as a keyword for something like that. Exactly. Key phrase, exactly. The long tail keywords are the key phrase. It would be a more complete and detailed query or question than the basic way before. So if I wanted to look up how to tie a tie, if I've got those keywords on my site about fashion and style, that could be a way for me to get found because people are being specific, they're searching for something specific. So three pillars of modern SEO, longevity, authority, and content. So these are three, one of three of many signals factors that the search engines look at when they want to decide on ranking a site. We've got longevity. How long has your site existed? We should actually go back. How long has your online presence existed? Because, and I say presence generically instead of website, is because you don't Technically, you don't need to have a website to get found. We saw that some of those results that were appearing were on Yelp, for example. So you might be able to manage by having a presence on Yelp, or on eBay, or Facebook. You might not need an actual website. Uh, it really depends on your business and your competition and what requirements you need online. If I need to sell a product, I cannot sell my product directly on Facebook or on Twitter and such. I need to direct people from my Twitter over to my shopping cart, which could be on my website, it could be on Etsy, it could be on eBay, etc. But the longer you have an online presence, the better. That's why perhaps you've been trying to rank well and your competitor keeps appearing higher than you all the time. Well, your competitor created their website a year ago before you. You're a year late. So one of the things that the search engine looks, is, looks at is how long have you existed? But there's no way to address that. You either have a website for a year or you don't. There's no way to somehow change some setting somewhere to, to fake it or whatever. So you have to have a presence. Now one way to counteract that, because you either exist or you don't, is to then focus on authority. Why should you be ranked so well? So why? When someone searches, why should your page be up there? Just because you're yet another bakery, yet another realtor, yet another public speaker, yet another whatever, unfortunately, I hate to break it to you, there's always going to be another one of you, especially your business. 
Um, there's always going to be another realtor in San Diego that targets people 50 year olds and up that have a $200,000 income. There's always going to be lots of people that are in your same niche competing with you. So why should you be ranked so well? That goes to the third one, content. What is the stuff that you have to show for it? I've got a website. Great, and so does the rest of your competition. But I'm on Facebook. Great, so does half your competition. I'm on Facebook and I have coupons that I put on Facebook. Okay, now we're talking. Your competition is not doing that. So what is it about your content that you're doing that can help you rank? Because if your competition is not doing it, I've got a website, but I've got a blog. My competitors don't have a blog. A blog, so sidebar over here, blogging is very important for modern SEO. A blog is content published on a regular basis. Articles, content, posts, stuff published on a regular basis. Usually it's on your website. Sometimes it can be off your website, like over on blogger.com. You can do blogging on LinkedIn nowadays also. They give you a little spot to do blogging. But basically it's, it's, um, it's content that you publish on a regular basis. Uh, because the more content you have, the more the search engines can see that and then say, you're an authority on that concept. You're writing a lot about health. You're writing a lot about healthy families. You're writing a lot about, you know, nutritional value of restaurant food. You're writing about all of these things related to each other. You're becoming an authority. The search engines see this. Other, search, other websites see this. You're becoming an authority which helps you counteract not having the longevity in place. But the sooner you start blogging and the longer you do it, you've got that longevity, you've got that content building your authority to help you rank better than the competition. I teach a class on blogging, I don't remember the days, but here is a very quick tip about it. Uh, people will then always ask, how much should I blog and how, what, how often and all of that. I'll say, as a beginner, one post, you know, one article per month of 100 words. Basic beginner thing here. Other um, other ways to do it, or other tutorials and such. Other advice that you'll see is saying, you know, you need to be publishing 300 words a week. Sure, if I had the time for it and the content for it and the stable of authors. But I'm just doing it myself. I'm running my business and I've got to do my SEO. And part of that as a beginner is once a month you're going to find the time to write 100 words. You're going to see that that will fill up faster than you think. And you're going to publish that once a month. You're going to put out this content out to the world. In the blogging class we go into more detail and we, we brainstorm with everyone to find some ideas for everyone about what you could be blogging about. So I'm not going to get into detail in this class. But basically, it's about the various topics of your business. Write about the various topics of your business. That's a very open-ended, meaning you can find a lot of content. Content, authority, longevity. All of those, if you address those things, will help your SEO. That and many other things, of course. It's a lot of signals. It's a lot of details to get ranked well. And so, you've designed a great looking website, but you're not publishing any blogs, or you're not active on Twitter or Facebook and such, that's probably one of the reasons why then you're not getting traffic. Now, this is 
this is its own topic in and of itself, but I want to introduce something to you to think about. If you go to the website empire.cred, if you didn't know, there are many new dot somethings. There's not just dot com anymore, dot net, dot org, dot biz. There's so many new ones. Dot org, dot uh, condo, dot tv, etc. Dot ninja, dot guru, dot xyz, dot cool. So the point of that is, I wanted to get Victor's Bakery. Dot com. My family has Victor's Bakery, a real bakery, for 20 years. And I just thought about getting online this year. Victor's Bakery was probably taken 10 years ago, 15 years ago. The web's been around almost 30 years now. So that name was probably taken, that dot com. There are other dots that you can invest in. Dot co, dot us, dot tv, dot io, dot cred, etc., etc. There's lots of websites extensions that you can get. And really, it doesn't quite matter it doesn't matter as before to get a keyword filled domain name. In the old days I would want to have San Diego uh, San Diego Healthy Bakery.com because I wanted to get found when people would search for healthy San Diego bakeries. You know, healthy San Diego Bakery.com. That's exactly what I would want in the old days. Someone took that or a spammer took it. So, okay, I'd rearrange the world, the words healthy baker San Diego.com. Um, that someone took that. So, having a domain name with the exact keywords does not matter anymore because. Before you heard about it, before you knew about it, um, what's a Facebook? What's a Twitter? What's a Google? What's a Flickr? You know, all of these websites with all of these weird names that now we know what it is, and now I know what Instagram is, now I know what Snapchat is, but before I, someone told me about it, I don't know what it is. So therefore, you don't need to have these exact domain names anymore like before, because the .coms are all taken, basically. I'll come back to this topic in a little bit more detail a little later. But what I wanted to do here was mention empire.cred, which is a big topic in and of itself. But remember that I said that the easy way to get traffic uh, and searches and such is to pay for it. Uh, this is a virtual pay-per-click website, um, that keyword pay-per-click, PPC, because we've got PPC, pay-per-click, paying for search results, and we've got organic, which is not paying for search results. not paying for search results, investing all of the time and effort into getting found. In the middle, I'm sure it has a name, maybe virtually organic or something. In the middle is this website, and there's other ones, but I think this is the biggest one, empire.cred. It's in the middle. You can create ads to get traffic to your site for free. You can create traffic to your site through Empire for free. Uh, it's a virtual currency that you accumulate by being on social media. Again, it's a bigger topic than I can talk about, but if you create a free account here, if you connect your Twitter, your Facebook, your Instagram, whatever, if you connect all your social media profiles to your Empire account, you will accumulate a virtual currency where you then can create real ads for people to see and click and follow to your website. You accumulate that virtual currency by being active on social media. So if you just set up your accounts and you never use your Twitter, you never use your 
your, your Google or whatever, then you're not going to be accumulating very much of this virtual currency, so it's not that useful. But to me personally, this has been very useful personally, and also for businesses, I set this up for a client because they're going to have a website and they're going to have a Twitter and a Facebook, let's say. And I connect both of those two accounts, Twitter, Facebook, to an Empire Avenue, uh, an Empire.Cred account here, and um, then we get these virtual currencies called EVEs, and then I can create an ad. We've got a, a brand new blog post, an ad for people to read, and it gets traffic. Obviously, if you pay real money to like Google and Bing and such, you get much more traffic. But this, you know, anecdotally has been very useful. I would recommend you look into it. We probably won't have very much time in this class to really get into it. There's lots to talk about. Make a note and look into empire.cred. I still call it by its old name, which is Empire Avenue, but now it's empire.cred. And you should look into it. So I'll see here. I don't know. It probably has some name. Virtually organic. PPC. Empire.cred. Where you're using virtual money to drive real traffic. Sometimes that pay-per-click stuff is valuable. I just started a business. I want to get the ball rolling. I want to start to get traffic. It's okay to invest in the beginning and periodically in some PPC. Set aside some amount of money. It can be, you know, ten dollars, five dollars, twenty, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. You could set aside twenty dollars a month. Think about how you might save $20, maybe not buy so many of those coffees, and instead save some of that money to invest it into some Google ads, some Bing ads, and get traffic to your site, and that's going to pay for itself, more traffic to your site, hopefully then you're getting more customers or sales or whatever your site is about. And so there is like an echo, when you pay for PPC, you're going to get a spike in traffic and such, and it's going to die down eventually and then go back down to, to normal, but there's going to be a residual effect of, of you paying for that. But in this class we're going the long way, the difficult way, and that's through the long tail keywords. So I'm going to make a drawing here. I'll put this in the network folder. There's going to be a chart, simple x and y chart, on the vertical we've got frequency, so going vertically is frequency, and going horizontally is keyword. And then we've got a graph that looks like this. Let me try it in another color. We have a, an item that looks like this, and then it just keeps tapering off like that or going slowly, slowly down, very slowly down. And so the way we read this is that we've got some keywords, so there's a possible set of keywords here, some keywords that are going to be used a lot, that are going to be searched for a lot. Some keywords, like social media marketing, that everyone's trying to use. That keyword would be here, and it has a high frequency, and therefore we're a needle in a haystack. It's hard for us to get found because everyone is using that keyword. Further down this way, we've got a keyword that is very specific. What did I say? Affordable social media marketing in San Diego? It was more specific. That more specific keyword is over here, where less people are using it. So modern SEO is finding the long tail over here, areas over here where less people are using that keyword than over here. 
This is the concept of the long tail keyword strategy. And so this concept then shows that it tapers off at some point and you've got uh, less competition to get found. So the big idea is to find those keywords, to develop those keywords. And because we develop them one point, we're not, that doesn't mean we're going to rely on those keywords for months and months and years. We may change them, we may update them, we may add to them. So when I did this search and found all of this competition, but less competition when I was more specific, that's what we're going to talk about now, getting those keywords. So any questions so far? I've got another handout for you. Again, I'll turn the printer on a little bit later. Let me remind you where the handouts are at. I'm going to put a copy of my drawing as well in there, and I'll put my notes a little bit later in there. But where we've got my notes is you want to open the computer window at the top left. Double click computer. And then network location, classroom data z. Open network lo location classroom data z and then scroll down to find campus SEO Monday. Double click campus SEO Monday if you got here a little bit late today. The syllabus is in there, the code of conduct, and I've just added an item called campus SEO 1 long tail strategy. Drag that to your desktop. Don't just double click it in my folder. You want to drag it from my desktop. I mean, my folder to your desktop. Um, if everyone's trying to open the same file on the network, sometimes it doesn't open. So drag it to your desktop. If anyone's having any trouble finding that, let me know. I'm going to copy that to your desktop. So copy that over and then we'll look at it. Close the network folder and then open that item. Campus SEO 1 long tail. Again, if you brought a USB drive, you should save this stuff to your USB drive. If you didn't, you can email it to yourself. If you need help with that, let me know at the end of the day. Or we can print it when I turn it back on. But let's look at that handout. And so I've got here, nowadays search engines don't rank your site very well unless you have good content. It's not just about simple keywords anymore. You're not going to be found when people search for Italian restaurants. You will have a better chance of being found by authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. So it's about the long tail of keywords. If you understand your niche better, you will be able to potentially rank better. In this activity, you'll define your long tail keywords. So again, hedge words. I say here, uh, better chance of, and potentially rank better, because you don't know your competition. You don't know if your competition is so entrenched that you'll have a hard time getting on that first page of results or even beating them. Uh, it can be a long process. It can be difficult. It can be maybe not obtainable with certain keywords, because they're so frequently used on that long tail graph. So I like to show the example here, you know, authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. And there's a bunch of results. One of our clients is right here on the first page, the very, very first item. Italianissimo Trattoria. They did not pay for that ad. They actually the owner is refuses to pay for a lot of things. His food speaks for himself. 
for itself, themselves. So the number one result here is not an ad. It is a result that Google deemed to rank the highest because of the ratings. These are the GAT rated items. This is a place. They've created a location on Google Plus, on, on Google Local. That's something that we address in the social media class because you can create a social media profile for your business, especially if you create it on Google. You will have priority over the other ones because past those nice results, then we have the plain results that everyone else then can look at. We've got these review sites like Zomato.com, TripAdvisor, Yellow Pages, Open Table. Yelp. But even in the regular results, that client shows up there. Then we've got Casabella, the guys down the street, and so forth. There's lots of Italian food restaurants. I chose a specific location. It showed the client. There's their competitor down the street. And then the, uh, the other competitor further down the street. But if you were to skip those, let's say you thought those were ads, so you skip those. You're still going to see that client number one right there on their website, number two on Yelp, and then more Yelp results, and then TripAdvisor, the same client on TripAdvisor. That's that SEM of things, search engine marketing. What else are you doing besides your website? As I said, that client really doesn't spend a lot uh, to do anything else besides the food. They don't really uh, spend anything on Twitter and Facebook. You know, one of the employees works on Facebook, so uh, they're busy in the kitchen and they're also on Facebook. You know, double job. On Twitter, I like the client. I do some free tweets here and there for them. And that, uh, that the result of their, of their great food is what has ranked them so well, and the search engines look at that. TripAdvisor, Yelp, all those places to rank them well. Yes? Those photos are people going in there, taking a selfie with their food and uploading it to Facebook. Free advertising. So the the uh, the thing. I don't believe the I don't believe they discourage it, but um, people do it. It's just it's free advertising, and they they know the value of that because instead of Setting. Yeah, and it's got nearly 300 reviews right now. You know, lots of places have 10 reviews, 5 reviews, 20 or so. This has got nearly 300. So lots of people. Once you have a lot of reviews on these review sites, it really is more meaningful because these can easily be skewed with 10, 12 reviews get to 300 reviews, it probably is a four and a half star restaurant. So notice, um, this is the long tail that I'm searching for there. Perhaps I get more specific, maybe looking for Sicilian style Italian food restaurant in San Diego. You know, I'm, I'm being specific than just Italian food. That's what we need to do nowadays, be specific, the long tail keyword strategy. So my handout here is an activity where we talk about both ways, the old way and the new way. So what we'll do is we'll write some notes here. We've got this activity. You can either write it on paper, or I recommend digitally, because this will help us. It'll be easier if we copy and paste. So what I mean is, let's go to the Start menu. And down here on the little search box, search programs, search Word. Let's search for Microsoft Word. Again, you can write this on paper, but it'll be easier if we if we use a digital notepad because then we could copy and paste. Search Word 2013. <clears throat> so just launch Word. And this comes up. We'll choose the blank template. We'll create a new file with the blank template. And we'll save this. If you bought a USB, save it on your USB. If not, uh, you'll have to email it to yourself. These computers have a software, have protection called Deep Freeze. 
there's a little polar bear staring at you in the corner here. That's deep freeze. And what that is, is that our computers are locked. If you save anything on the desktop or anywhere on the computer, it erases when you restart the computer. It's not that I go in and delete your files, it's that our computers are protected. So anything that you save, if you don't take it with you, it's gone. That's not so good for you if you forget to take it. But it's good because this is a public lab, and if someone accidentally, you know, they didn't log out of their hotmail, as soon as we restart the computer, everything gets erased, it goes back to factory settings. If our computer catches a virus, we just restart the computer and then it's fine. So you have to remember to save your files and take them with you. So on Word, I'm going to select blank document. This is, let's write at the top here, competitor analysis and long tail keyword strategy. I'm going to save that on my desktop or flash drive. So anyway, go ahead and save that file. Competitor analysis and long tail keyword strategy. So my notes have these two, have these three parts of the activity. Um, as I said, I do this for a living in addition to teaching it. So it, part of my company, when we get hired by a customer, um, we need to know as much as we can about them so that we can do the best job for them. We can make a website or do social media and such SEO for any company, but the best result is when we know as much as we can about them. So if you hire anyone, uh, if you don't want to do it yourself and you want to hire someone, make sure that they are thorough, that they will customize their tactics for you. And so this is something that one of us in the company would do, oftentimes Sharna, uh, would meet with the uh, interested parties of the company and talk about a variety of things, and then go off and do competitor analysis. Uh, she would use generic keywords and then long tail keywords to find um, companies that are in competition with the client. So I'm going to say that I'm doing this with the keyword, because we need to do the generic keyword and the long tail. So generic keyword. This can be, you can do what I'm doing or for your real company. I'm going to search for, let's say I've got this fictional company, Victor's Bakery, and I want to see my competition in this space. So I'm simply going to search for bakeries. My generic keyword is bakeries. I want to see what my competition is with that keyword. I already know from my experience that a very generic keyword is a needle in a haystack for me to be found, but I want to see which are the needles that are rising in the haystack. So, that's my keyword. I'm going to open my search engine and I'm going to start with Google. If we were doing this for a real company, we would do it for Google and Bing for a variety of results. Bakeries. If it's suggesting a location and such, ignore that. I just simply want to search a generic keyword. And the result here is a bunch of red dots on a map. The call out box over here about these rated restaurants. Yelp result, another Yelp result, twigs.org. That seems to be a real result. Question? Could you clean up this once? Well, if you notice on the second question, we do get to that. But first we'll do it this way. Um, so twigs.org, they, they want it, their Twigs Bakery. Notice they didn't get twigsbakery.com. They didn't even get twigs.org. Com. They got twigs.org. That's another example of how the domain name doesn't quite matter like it used to. In the old days, when there was just Yahoo and such, the search engines would look at your website, look for your keyword of bakery, and if it found it ten times on your site, 
and your competitor only used it four times, then the search engine would say, this, your site must be better than that other one because you used bakery ten times and they used it four times. You've even got it in your title. But that's the old way. So Twigs is a real result. Edelweiss Bakery is a real result. The bakery entry on Wikipedia is not. The 25 San Diego bakeries we love for the moment is not. Best bakeries from TripAdvisor is not. Nothing Bunt Cakes is a real result. So you might not get any real results with your search. That's how generic your keyword is, and that's how not as useful it could be for you. You want to find at least three, according to my handout. More is better. But you want to find at least three results that are not ads, that are not, you know, review sites and such. Three real results that are a real website that I can go to directly if I click. For the moment, I would also avoid the ones that are in the, in the nice little call-out box here. I want to see the results in a plain old, plain old search here. And what I want to do is, I'm going to start with Twigs Bakery. I'm going to select the text, which is the title of the website, the address of the website, and the description of the website. I'm going to take, I'm going to select all of these three and copy it, copy it and paste it into my Word document. That's why I said it's better to do this digitally than on real paper. I'm going to copy all of that. Right-click, copy. Go over to, go back to Word, and I'm going to do right-click. Keep text only. If you know control V to paste, then that'll bring it with all of the baggage. That'll bring it with, you know, the bullet points and the colors and all that. You know, it's distracting. I simply want to right click and select this third option here of paste options. Keep text only. And that'll keep only the text. That's what I want to focus on. The first result that was a real result with the bakery's keyword is Twigs Bakery. So as I said, that very first line here, that's known as the uh, page title. Sometimes it's known as the meta title. Then we've got the URL or you know web address. And then the last one there is the uh, page description, also known as meta description. Meta description. Every search engine shows you a variation of this. Page title, URL, meta description. This, therefore, then is your your first chance to make that first impression. This is how you, this is judging a book by its cover. You have plenty of books to read, I'm going to judge it by the cover. I have plenty of websites to look at, I'm going to judge it by these results. You have this little bit of space, this screen real estate, to make the impression to convince someone to click on you. All of this can be edited, all of this is in your control to edit. Keeping things in mind of the long tail keyword strategy. So I see Twigs Bakery. I search for bakeries. And I mention San Diego. It knows that I'm in San Diego. Nowadays, even if you don't try, the search engine, coupled with the web browser, is smart enough to tell where you're at, at least in a general location. So that it's not giving you the best bakery in Montana. It's giving me the best bakery in San Diego. And that's San Diego, California, not San Diego, Texas. So location is often built in here. Your web address here, twigs.org. If, if I didn't know with their title that they were a bakery, I would think they're, you know, a nature preserve or, you know, uh, bird watching expeditions or something. I wouldn't know what they are just based on that name, and that's fine. You don't have to have your keywords in your title, especially if it makes it long and cumbersome and weird looking, spam looking. How many websites have you seen that you don't click on, hopefully, that are something like affordable Rolex watches. 
cheapmedicinerx.com or cheapmedicinerx.com. You know, these kinds of websites that are using these keywords. Nowadays, a lot of us are getting savvy. This is probably a spam site. I'm probably going to get a virus here. I'm probably going to get cheap quality results that are going to poison me with lead. So, um, you don't need your exact keywords in your title anymore. So I'm going to make a note here. EMD. Exact match domain. Not, not EDM. EMD. Exact match domain. That particular site completely does not match a keyword. That's fine. Nowadays, it's sort of exact match domains are sort of a bad thing. The search engines change. In the old days, that's what you wanted. You wanted to be San Diego Bakery.com. But um, if I can go buy a domain name, so can the spammers, and they can buy a hundred of them at once and pick all of these variations of these keywords and take those keywords from me, a legitimate business, and take them over from an illegitimate business and drive traffic to themselves in the old days. After a certain point, the search engines got smart to that and they say, this is not as important as it used to be. There's too much spam. There's too many websites that use EMDs. So we won't count it as importantly. So just about any name will work. If you couple it with all of the other factors of SEO. If you also do social media, if you also do blogging, if you also update your site, if it also is nicely designed, all of the things we'll be talking about in this class. So just about any name will work. Let's see the description. Twigs is a boutique bakery specializing in cakes for all occasions, weddings, birthdays, parties. We have two cafes, coffee houses in the University Heights, and then it cuts off. You have a limited amount of space here to write. You can't write a whole soliloquy here. You'll get cut off. Therefore, you have some amount of space to, f to really get across your message. This amount of space changes. It used to be you could write, like, let's say, 90 characters. Then Google changed their font. They made it larger. A larger font means less text will display. So I can't exactly tell you how many keywords once we get advanced. I mean, I, I can't exactly tell you how long the description is. So you really want to think about the most important concepts first in your description. They've got the keyword boutique bakery, cakes, weddings, birthdays, parties, many of these keywords that people could be searching for. They've even got University Heights listed there. Maybe I'm looking for coffee houses in University Heights. That's what shows up there. Maybe I don't even put University Heights in my search engine. Maybe I'm standing on the corner of University Avenue and I take out my phone and I, and I say, you know, find me a find me a coffee house nearby, and then because these things get smarter, it takes my natural language query and it searches, and I could get twigs as a result because they've got that keyword or combinations thereof. You want to say concepts here? These are keywords. So that uh, description did it right. You know, it's got the keyword bakery in the title. It's got bakery and other ancillary things related in the description. They're doing it right. One thing that I might suggest to them to also do is to add a phone number. Think about it for yourself. Uh, if someone gets a page of 10 results and you've got a description that sounds like what someone needs, and a phone number directly on the description. Maybe you don't even need them to visit your website. Maybe just on that glance there, 
they know what they want, you've got a phone number, you've got contact. So if it makes sense for you, put in that information on the description, maybe hours of operation. The problem, of course, is that's a relatively small amount of space. You don't have all of that space to write a lot of what your company is and contact information. But if you can fit it in and if it makes sense and it's not robotic or, you know, forced, you might want to be specific like that with contact info. Let me make a note back on my other notes screen here. Black Hat SEO, White Hat SEO. The bad techniques that get you labeled as a spammer. White Hat, the good techniques that rank you well. As I said years ago, the thing that you needed to do was to put your keywords all over your site. You would put it in your domain name. So it would be uh, AuthenticEastLakeBakery.com. And I would use Authentic East Lake Bakery all over my site. The first word in my first paragraph of my site. And on my about page. And on my blogs and on my footer, all over the place, in headings, I would put Authentic East Lake Bakery all over the place. And in the old days, the search engines loved that, because then they could better rank you compared to the competition. But if I can do that, so, so can the spammers, and so did the spammers, and they abused it. They would put in so many variations of a keyword, and even keywords that didn't even matter or match up with what the company was about. They would use these bad techniques. They would abuse the techniques. Black hat techniques. Um, white hat techniques are the techniques that we um, that are officially sanctioned uh, by the search engines to help you rank. And the names of these come from the classic cowboy movies. When the bad guys rolled into town, or rode into town, and shot up the place, what kind of hat were they wearing? black hat. And when the sheriff came in to clean up the town, white hat. So good techniques, bad techniques. And because this is digital, there's also gray hat techniques. Gray hat SEO. Which are techniques in the middle. Techniques that perhaps right now aren't negative, that someone has devised and the search engines haven't figured out yet, or techniques that are currently white hat, but because they've been abused, they're becoming black hat. So, you know, techniques falling out of favor. But if you continue to rely on these techniques that now the search engines are saying, perhaps don't do these anymore, eventually they will become black hat and eventually they will hurt you. Black Hat SEO techniques hurt you. Once you, the search engines discover that your website is using these techniques, your ranking will plummet, and you may never get out of a negative hole of SEO without a lot of effort and paying and such. And so you want to engage in White Hat. That's what this class is all about. I might mention Black Hat, but I never tell you to do them. I don't recommend you do any Black Hat techniques. You're going to get caught. The search engines have software running 24 hours a day checking every website that it can find that it can find and if your website gets tagged with a bunch of these black hat SEO violations you know I believe you you're not a spammer but the search engines won't and the search engines are more along the vein of uh, guilty until proven innocent shoot first ask questions later the search engines are gonna mark you as a spammer and you're gonna have a hard time getting out of that designation So if you've got a website that's really long because you needed the keywords, you thought you needed the keywords, 
you know, Mission Valley Seafood Restaurant, the best dot com, something like that. That is going toward Black Hat SEO. That's Gray Hat. It's not as good anymore to have that huge name anymore. It doesn't help you. It looks weird. It looks cumbersome. I look at a big name like that and I think spammer. Someone claimed that name to steal the SEO. I'm never going to click on them. Now, that's me personally. There may be millions of people that are not that savvy and that name will work for you great. But when the search engines get around to checking your site, then you've got this little negative check mark and this little negative check mark and that one, suddenly you're going to plummet. And here, case in point, the number one result doesn't even use the keyword on the, on the address. Let's see another one of these results, another real result, yes. Um, you had your Notice how smart it is. I wrote bakeries and it gave me a result that had bakery and bakery. Okay, so, so it's the, yeah, it's getting better and better. It, before I had to put bakery, bakeries, bakeries misspelled, and all of these techniques. Now there's these things are much smarter, so I don't have to really bother. So I was seeing twigs. Edelweiss Bakery, they're the second real result. Again, I would copy that, I would paste it. I would right click paste as text only, keep text only, or else it's distracting. So they've got Edelweiss Bakery, they've got San Diego up on their title also. They do have Edelweiss Bakery San Diego in their full address, but notice they're number two. Edelweiss Bakery in Rancho Bernardo. A full-service European bakery, family-owned and operated, specializing in European-style baked goods. So they're in all San Diego County, I guess, but specifically Rancho Bernardo. And they're also talking about weddings. So I see wedding appearing twice. In the top two results, I'm seeing wedding. The point of doing this research is also to see what are trends that I'm seeing. These people, these companies, are ranking better than mine. Why? I need to dissect why. And I might not have the education or the terminology to really answer why, but that's fine. I can, you know, speak with my with my terminology. I can write my gut feeling positive negative. I don't have to have an education in this, but I'm seeing a trend. Wedding has been listed twice. Weddings and wedding. Again, variations don't matter like they used to. So perhaps on my website, I do also sell wedding pastries from my, from my Victor's Bakery. I sell all kinds of baked goods. I do do weddings. I'm not ranking very well. I haven't mentioned weddings anywhere on my site or the, or the description here, perhaps. So it might be a good idea for me to use wedding. Notice what specializes them. European style. They mention European twice. So what do I have to offer that's unique? Maybe I am getting some traffic. Maybe they are getting some traffic from, from, from that. And notice they hit Rancho Bernardo here and San Diego there. Family owned and operated. That's, that's going also toward that marketing aspect of things. The search engines say, don't think like a robot, like a search engine. Think like a person. As a person, I read that, and that's interesting to me. I might want that connection with a family-owned bakery instead of a big corporation, instead of, you know, something that doesn't feel intimate. So I'm getting more of an idea of what's working for other people. I'm getting an idea of what I need to do for, for rankings. I would make a note. Wedding keyword seems to be trending. There's, I think, another result. Nothing bunt cakes. So I'm going to select that one, paste it.
analyze it a bit. So, Bunt Cake Bakery in San Diego. Again, the singular, not the, not the, not the multiple. Singular tense. Mentioning San Diego, California. Their website, not, nothing but cakes.com. This is a deep link that goes specifically to the Mission Valley branch, a near Mission Valley. So, again, it kind of was smart about it. This one, they, the most important thing, I can kind of tell what they're about based on the, on the title and the address. So, they chose to focus more on the most important contact information for them for themselves. Their address, Mission Center Road, their contact information, and an email and phone number. So I will say used description for contact info. They've made it a point to have a person, a couple of people's names here, Mara Fortan and JP Fortan or Fortan. And that is what I was saying earlier about are you the face of your company? Maybe getting on brandyourself.com or reputation.com might be useful for you because you are the head baker, the head chef on your restaurant, and therefore you're the face of it. And so here they've put the face of their business here, contact info for that seems to be a branch. Um, seems to be a larger organization. I, I know there's one where I live in East Lake, and they've got one here in Mission Valley, so it looks like they're, you know, there are branches and such. My other note here pointed to Deep Link. It's just a link that goes deeper into your website than the top level, which is just the .com, the home page. Anything besides the home page is a deep link because it's deeper in the site. This Google search result pointed to a deep link, and it pointed to a deep link based on my location. So if I've got multiple locations of my business throughout San Diego, it might be a good idea to create multiple pages in my site about those locations. So when someone searches for, you know, uh, construction site fencing in Imperial Beach, and I've got a branch in Imperial Beach, my result could show up because I've got a page that has that keyword in the address. Point it to a deep link for a location. So obviously here I would do the same thing for Bing. I would do as many as I would as, as I would want to or have time for. When we do this for a client, uh, we usually do this for, you know, five or so competitors. And we gather intel. We look at these keywords, who's ranking on what keyword, and then we go even deeper. You are actually going to click on these results. Yes, you're going to give them a free hit, a free bit of traffic, but you're going to swallow your pride, you're going to click on your competitor's address, and you're going to see further on their website what do they have that uh, makes them rank number one as well. So, you know, I would look at a website. I don't have the education of web design, but I know what I like and what I don't like, so I would look at it and I would say, okay, well, I see, I see a slideshow showing some really cool cakes, actually. You know, this to believe but this actually this over here is an actual cake it's not a real purse uh, 2016 updated they've got a links links to their Twitter and their Facebook okay they've got their addresses up I mean their navigation bar with their addresses Adams Avenue University Heights pretty specific a nice chunk of text at the beginning here so you're gonna make a note here I'll do it on my other notes here. Search engines value text above images. Text is something that the brain of Bing or Google 
can look at and understand and categorize and show you when you search for it. Images still are difficult to deal with because sometimes it seems amazing how complex computers or smart computers seem to be, but I always tell people computers are dumb. They don't know anything. They need to be programmed to know something, to deal with something. So for example, if there's a picture that I take and I feed it into a search engine, it may or may not know what it is. It may know it's a human. It's three people in the picture. But it doesn't know that it's me and my brothers on the beach. Um, it just sees humans. It just sees, you know, dots in an image. But if I had a paragraph or a few sentences of text, the search engines can easily analyze that and catalog it and so forth. So the point of that is you want to make sure that your website has as much regular text as possible rather than graphical text. Unfortunately, it seems that Twigs, even though they're number one, their logo up here has graphical text. And what I mean is the phone number. It's fine that their actual text is a graphic, their logo, that is. But it's not so good that their phone number right there is a graphic. The search engines have a harder time analyzing this than if it were regular, selectable text. That's how I can tell. I can select regular text. I can select two letters in a word. This looks like text, but it's not. If I try to select 619 and drag it, whoops, I'm dragging the whole picture. The whole thing is a picture. It's not actually text. You want to avoid that. This would have been much better to have that text floating around there somewhere as regular text. Because if I were to visit this on my mobile device and I want to call them, if I try to tap on that phone number, nothing will happen. But if I have that phone number as plain text, these smartphones nowadays are smart enough that you tap on a phone number and it will dial it. It won't do it if it's in a picture. So that's some more notes to make here. I'm going to go back to Twigs. I'm going to analyze my competitors. What's good, what's bad, what I like, what I don't, etc. I'm going to say uses graphic text. Not good. Nice green design. Again, you don't have to have the, the language of web design. You just have to say objectively or subjectively what you like or don't about the site. As you look at more of these sites, you're probably then going to form a picture. You're going to look at the, you're going to see the trends. Why did these three sites rank number one on search, on the Google search? Because they, they share these things. So then you'll see my site doesn't have any of that. So I might want to add that to my site. My site doesn't have a slideshow. My, sli my site slideshow is down over on the gallery page. But number one result here has it right on the home page. I want to check the other competitors to see if they've got a slideshow of, of their food on the front page. I personally don't like this weird floating bit of graphic here. To me, it looks like a tablecloth. That's probably the side of a cake. I don't like that. I'm going to make a note of that. Weird graphic on the top right. Wouldn't it be nicer like that? Without that graphic? Wouldn't it also be nicer if the... if the picture in the middle were also... I mean the picture on the left were in the middle? So those are the things that I would be making notes of.
So we're going to take a break in a moment, but this is the idea for this part of the activity. There's two parts in the, act in the activity. The old way, which is what we're doing here. And I would also want to do this on Bing. I might get different results on Bing. I want to see what other competitors appear. I want to do this reconnaissance. I want to check the competition. I'm seeing these trends. I'm out of the trend. That's why perhaps I'm not ranking. I'm seeing that they're doing things that I'm not doing. So I would write about all of that. We'll take a break. When we come back, then we'll do the second way, which is the long tail keyword way. And then this is when we talk about a clean search engine. So it's 3.10. We'll take another break until 3.20. I won't lock the door this time. And I'll turn the printer back on. So we'll come back at 3.20 and do the second part.